Oh my goodness, where do we go from here? The 12 Hours of Seabrain had so much that happened. From the incredibly competitive battle in GTP featuring all four manufacturers, to the turn of events for Tower Motorsports number 8 LMP2 entry, and then of course, the big shock of the day, that massive crash involving the top three leaders in GTP. All of that and so much more will be discussed in this video as I go over my race review for the Mobile One 12 Hours of Sebring, which became the second round of the 2023 IMSA season. There have been many exciting races in the previous 71 events held at Sebring, but this particular race may top them all. That incident at turn three towards the end of the race will go down in the history books, and even while recording this, I'm still shocked and amazed that even happened. For this video, I will pick out some key moments from hour one to hour 12 of the 71st edition of the 12 Hours of Sebring. And of course, I will be talking more in depth about that multi-car crash that shocked the motorsport community. So for the race leaders, the qualifying looked like this with the Cadillac Action Express car qualifying on pole position. It was a pretty clean start to the race. I think the only major issue was an LMP3 facing backwards at turn one. And I bet it was very scary for that LMP3 entry as a whole bunch of GT cars were coming around the first corner to start the race. Almost immediately, the GTP battle began. The number 31 Action Express Cadillac led away, but it had the Wayne Taylor number 10 Acura right behind. What was great to see was that the BMW M Hybrid V8s were keeping up. Go back to the first race at Daytona and the BMWs were nowhere near the other manufacturers of Porsche, Cadillac, and Acura. So it was great to see that BMW were in the fight at Sebring competitively keeping up with the other manufacturers. A fierce battle then broke out between the number 10 Acura and the two Cadillacs. Having got past Durrani in the pole-sitting Action Express Cadillac, the 01 VLMDH, driven by Sebastian Bourdais at the time, got past the WTR Acura and took the lead an hour into the race. Chip Ganassi Racing started to extend the gap of the lead of Sebring, and as Sebastian Bourdais went into the pit lane, Scott Dixon climbed in, and the yellow Cadillac continued to extend the lead. Later on, over in LMP2, the number 35 TDS racing car had a heavy crash at the beginning of the back straight. Even though it was a pretty big impact with the tire wall, the 35 car was able to get back to the pits to get repaired and return to the race. With about six hours remaining, an unfortunate circumstance struck in GTP, as the first retirement comes from the number 24 BMW, engine overheating I believe the cause for the BMW's retirement. Soon after, the number 6 Porsche 963 was hit by an LMP3 entry during the caution. The Porsche took rear damage, and Dane Cameron, who was driving the car at the time, had to come into the pit lane for repairs. Unfortunately, Porsche would lose so much time with this car to their rivals. Around the same time, an incident happened for one of the LMP2 entries. This time, it was the number 8 Tower Motorsport car. It's crazy to think of the turn of events for the Tower Motorsport team. Considering the car had damage because of this incident and could have been out of the race, it's quite miraculous that they got this car back in the action. And then of course, later in the race, they ended up winning LMP2, and also another accomplishment, which I'll talk about very soon. Later on, drama came for Cadillac and Chip Ganassi Racing as Sebastian Bourdais in the 01 yellow Cadillac came into the pit lane with a bit of fire at the back of the car. This was dramatic as the car would come in to retire from the race lead. Absolutely devastating for the Chip Ganassi crew. Then as night approached, Tom Blomquist had to pull off to the side of the track in the MSR Acura as the rear left tire was missing on the car, another retirement for a GTP entry. This meant there were only five more hypercars on the grid. As a caution came out for the retired number 60 Acura, the leaders went into the pit lane except the number 25 BMW. That BMW seemed to be the car to lead the field on the restart, 
However, the BMW crew had to pit the 25 car for an unscheduled pit stop, as Team RLL had to do a brake change as fast as possible. And quick shout out to the team, they did an amazing job to get that car back out on track, so well done. So with an hour remaining, this began what would be an amazing battle for the race lead. The number 10 WTR Acura would lead away with Felipe Albuquerque in that car. But just behind were the Porsches. The two 963s somehow came alive during the end stage of this race and seriously had a chance of going for the overall victory. With the six now ahead of the seven, Matthew Jaminet was right behind Albuquerque and went for the move into turn 10. An incredible battle commenced between Acura and Porsche, showing off that the LMDH era is proving to be the next golden age of sports car racing. With about 20 minutes to go in the race, this is the point where the incident happened. At this point in time, the leaders were heading through the GTD traffic. So Jaminet was ahead into turn one, Albuquerque was right behind and already looking for an overtake into the first corner. As they approached turn two, Jaminet was blocked by two GTD cars. Since the Porsche driver is blocked, Albuquerque sees an opportunity to go to the left side of the track to make a move for the lead of the race. And while this is taking place, Jaminet sees he's blocked by these GTD cars, so he also decides to go to the left of the track. There are two factors to consider here. The GTD cars are in their own fight and they don't want to concede position to their rival. The other factor is that this part of the track is very narrow and doesn't allow a four wide battle. The unfortunate result is that both GTP drivers make contact. Albuquerque is into the grass and has unfortunately no control to stop the car. The Acura collides with the Porsche, ultimately taking them both out of the race. Meanwhile, Felipe Nazar in the number seven Porsche is trying to avoid this incident, but is actually pushed by a GTD car into the Acura, colliding heavily with Felipe Albuquerque's car and then going over the top of the sister Porsche number six car. This massive incident resulted in all the top three leaders out of the race with just 20 minutes to go. Jack Aiken in the 31 Cadillac avoided the contact to inherit the lead of the race, with Nicololi in the 25 BMW also avoiding the contact to jump into second. In my honest opinion, I believe this was a racing incident. There's a lot to consider here as there's GTD cars ahead having their own battle and then the GTP cars who are the leaders try to get around those cars by going to the left, all the while happening at a very narrow part of the track. There is also the factor of risk. This is the very end of the race and there's a lot on the lines as 20 minutes remain and this could be an opportunity for one of these teams to secure their first win this season. Some will say that Jaminet is at fault, some will say that Albuquerque is at fault. Whatever your opinion is, I respect it. The fact of the matter is, and I think the majority can agree with this, that this incident happening was incredibly unfortunate to witness. Beforehand, the leaders were having such an amazing battle, not just at that point, but throughout the entire race. And I wish this battle would have continued all the way to the flag, maybe even replicating what happened in LMP2 at Daytona earlier this year. And if you take the incident out of the equation here, just look at the racing. It was super competitive between the leaders pretty much the entire race. All manufacturers led at least one lap. So if you look at the strategy, if you look at the racing, if you look at the cars themselves, this just proves that this is going to be an amazing season and an amazing next few years of GTP in IMSA. But it's still shocking to see that this even happened on a racetrack, especially in the final few minutes of a race, such as the 12 hours of Sebring. But sometimes that's just how racing goes, and I'm sure the drivers and teams will come back stronger in the next round at Long Beach. So with the incident all cleaned up, the cars came across the line with the Cadillac Action Express team of Pipo Durrani, Alexander Sims, and Jack Aiken winning the Mobile One 12 Hours of Sebring in 2023. And BMW's number 25 car was able to recover to second place, grabbing the M-Hybrid V8 first ever podium in GTP. And according to the classification, the number six Porsche actually grabbed a podium. So Porsche was technically on the podium, even though they didn't finish the race with the car. 
As for the overall results, because six out of the eight GTP cars were tired, Tower Motorsports, who won LMP2 overall, were able to get onto the overall podium at Sebring. And like I mentioned earlier, a huge turn of events for this team, who had a crash and could have been out of the race at an earlier stage. Over in LMP3, it was the number 74 Riley car that took the win in that class. Over in GTD Pro, it was the number 9 FAF Motorsports car that took the win. This meant that the Porsches were able to recover after the BOP issues at Daytona. And over in GTD, it was Paul Miller racing the number 1 BMW M4 GT3 that took the win in that class. So that's my race review slash recap on what happened in the second round of the IMSA Championship in 2023 at the 12 hours of Sebring. What was your favorite moment from this race? And what are your thoughts on that crazy incident that happened towards the end of the event? Feel free to let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. And by the way, we will see the IMSA cars return to the track in April for round three in Long Beach. If you're interested in endurance racing and you want to get updates on the WEC and IMSA, make sure to subscribe to the left. And if you want to see more videos, watch one of the suggested options to the right of your screen. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.